Hello everybody, uh, you are welcome to uh, clip 2 of uh, part 3 in this course uh, of uh, modern wireless communication and applications. Uh, this part 3 is related mainly about wireless channels and, and their problems. Uh, we have already seen in clip 1 the basic or uh, um, the foundations of uh, problems of wireless communication uh, or for wireless channels, sorry, and we mention three, uh, mainly three like uh, problems uh, due to it is attenuation, large attenuation, um, or like large uh, uh, distance uh, fading, and then uh, we talk about uh, um, the multi path problem, and uh, we mention also this multi path problem, it has two impacts in the baseband and in the band pass and also the time varying or the time variance uh, nature uh, of of the channel uh, in this clip two we are going to talk about some techniques to mitigate such problems as we mentioned in the previous clip that uh, the ice eye can uh, limit the, uh, the, the, the bit rate or the th symbol rate that we can use in, in wireless uh, networks. So even uh, whatever channel coding we use or, or uh, transmitting power we use, because of this inter-symbol interference, it can, it can cause the, uh, like it can um, introduce very high interference between symbols to each other, and this will uh, block the, uh, uh, or fail the communication link with very high uh, probability of error, uh, which cannot be mitigated by uh, like normal techniques. So we need uh, some other techniques in order to mitigate or handle or reduce this inter-symbol interference. And uh, the method is used to do that is called equalizers, channel equalizers. Now let us talk a little bit about the channel uh, uh, equalizers. Okay, in general, uh, any signal processing tool uh, implemented in digital communication system to mitigate the problem of ISI could be referred as kind of equalizers. Okay, so again, the equalizer uh, are needed uh, or used to reduce or eliminate, if possible, the effect of the ISI. Okay. Um, how to um, like implement these uh, equalizers? Um, okay, the equalizer try to equalize or reduce the impact of the channel. So um, uh, if we send just uh, like uh, some symbol, like for example th that 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 symbol. This is the transmitted symbol, for example, that just some pulse. Okay, so what happened in, in, in the receiver side, we will, we will uh, receive this pulse repeated several times because of the multi path. So we will receive something, for example, like that. Okay, because of the channel, because the, the signal is arriving from different paths and it, each path it has it is on delay so um, uh, the linear or, or, or ch wireless uh, channels uh, uh, mainly could be modeled as linear uh, system or discrete uh, uh, linear filter so uh, it might come to mind that okay now i can remove the impact of this channel of this multi path simply by building some inverse of the uh, of the channel model if we have the channel model, if we inverse the, this channel model, then simply we can remove the impact of this channel. Is, is that possible or not? Let us see. Uh, uh, now we assume that this wireless channel, assume that this is your signal, and your signal goes to the, to the channel, and the channel we represent it as, as like a, a, a filter. And this filter, it has transfer function, for example, H, H of F. Of course, the filter we said that it is, uh, or the channel is time varying, so it should be F, uh, H of F and T, which or, or, or tau depends on the time of the uh, of the transmission. But now, for simplicity, let us assume that it is time invariant, or at least for uh, 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 for one transmitting symbol. So it is just H of F. Okay. Then we receive 
the signal this is r of t the received signal or r of f which has such kind of uh, uh, of shape now um, everyone might think that okay now if i just use one divided by h of f okay simply it will cancel the effect of h of f then i should get the original signal again uh, is that possible or not this is uh, by the way this is called ideal equalizer but this ideal equalizer it has mainly three limitation or three problems first it is not possible to know h of f exactly so h of f usually if even if we make some like analysis for the channel we can build the model with uh, and uh, with some limit uh, or limited accuracy so we cannot get the uh, h of f exactly as it is this is the first problem the second problem that uh, uh, even if h of f exactly known taking the inverse of h of f it might not be possible to realize it for example it can be non-causal filter for the, the the inverse okay so the inverse or, or it might be inherently unstable so it depends on h of f if the inverse is exist or not so this is a second problem the third problem even if we assume that the system that known exactly and the inverse exists and there's no problem with the inverse there's another problem that uh, uh, the inverse of the uh, uh, of the filter it might amplify the noise because we have white noise the noise is distributed everywhere in the in the in the uh, in the spectrum so it can it can be uh, amplified why it can be amplified let us see why um, let us assume that this is the uh, this is the the channel h of f or at least the amplitude of h of f in the frequency domain and this is ma the magnitude of h of f the transfer function of the channel assume that it, it is represented in this in this shape okay so uh, now we have noise and noise is everywhere because it is white noise of course it has very small value but anyhow it is distributed uniformly over the over the frequency domain okay now um, uh, we can see here that this is our signal comes to the channel h of f and of course we have noise everywhere we have noise here and then we have here 1 over h of f um, the signal here will will be what because we are, we are working in the frequency domain so in time domain it is convolution but in frequency domain will be multiplication so this is our signal let's say x of f in frequency domain so here the output will be x of f times h of f and then there is noise will be added in the frequency domain also so this we will have added noise n of f or n capital of f this is the noise added as the input of our equalizer this is the ideal equalizer now the output of this ideal equalizer will be what if we divide this by h of f then the output this is the output y of f will be x of f times h of f plus n of f divided by what by h of f this will be the result will be x of f this is the desired signal which which we can see that we remove the the impact of the channel or the multipath or the problems but we will have another factor which is the noise n of f divided by h of f remember now we assume that we have ideal filter we uh, like modeled the channel exactly with 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 hundred percent accuracy, this is of course impossible. But let us assume even this happened, and uh, uh, also we assumed that the inverse is is uh, like can be realized. So it is it is stable and and uh, uh, a causal system. So then even when these conditions happen, we got this this part. You can see that this part is the noise divided by h, and you can see here h of f at certain frequencies is very small 
So what happens when you divide the noise over a very small value, it will be amplified. So the noise can be amplified in this case. Of course, they use some regularization so they can add some value like, like alpha here to, to h of f, so they add some alpha. But by adding this regularization factor, they will also affect the received signal. So the received signal cannot be any more that, that uh, uh, as it is. So it will be corrupted because here, if you add alpha, in order to minimize the amplification of the noise, then what happened for the, your original signal? It will be h of f divided by h of f plus alpha times x of f. So it is not anymore x of f. So it has also some distortion for x of f. So now you need to compromise between the noise amplification and the corruption of your signal. So this is not easy to implement the ideal uh, equalizer. Here we can see some examples, simple example that uh, I generated in uh, uh, MATLAB. This is the, uh, the the signal that we need to send. So it is it is like one one and minus one one minus one, and this is the channel. We assume that the channel is low bus filter, and then we have we added very small noise. Even you can see the noise is not noticeable here in the output. So it is very small noise, and. Uh, you can see that because of this uh, multipath or because of the corruption of the channel that the signal cannot be received as it was transmitted so it, it, it was it has been received in this way and now we want to make ideal equalizer so I just divided over h of f and you can see what happened so the signal was uh, like like uh, um, disappeared in noise action because of the noise amplification and it was not possible anymore to go back to our original signal. Maybe the signal without equalization even, it, it, it looks better. So idle equalizer usually is not doable. So, but there are many other equalizers that we can we can uh, like implement in 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 the practice. Uh, we don't have time to go through them. However, that I will just uh, introduce one of those uh, famous equalizers and simple equalizers use it in the practice. It is called like tab delay line uh, uh, adaptive filter. So you can see here that this is the input signal after the channel, that the received signal, it goes through d different delays and each delay here is equal to the simple delay or the simple duration. This is the simple duration, okay? And then uh, we have uh, like multiplication here. This is we multiply this signal by what? By another signal. Why we are doing that? Uh, I will explain it shortly. Here we have the summation, so we we sum all the, the the signals. So here, for example, the input the input signal received, it is multiplied with the adaptive equalizer algorithm. The result will be added to the signal, the previous one, the previous received symbol, and and so on. Okay, now uh, and concentrate with me about this point. It is very important. Uh, we said that the channel is time varying so the channel itself the characteristic of the channel is is varying so the transmitter will send what is known as a training sequence will send the training sequence okay the training sequence is certain pattern of symbols that are known at the receiver so this is at the receiver side so the receiver knows what what it should come now so for example let us assume that we agree with the receiver that in the beginning of each uh, like transmission we will start by sending like s symbol s0 s1 s0 s2 uh, uh, for example if we assume the system is it, it has like uh, uh, four symbols so it is s3 s0 s1 is to and so on. So we send a series of of symbols that are known at the receiver. So then the receiver knows what it should receive now. Okay, maybe it can be fourteen uh, times or twenty six. Like 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 in JSM, they send twenty six bits for for this uh, uh, like equalization. If I remember well. So they send uh, a certain pattern of those bits are known at the receiver. So when these bits arrive to the receiver, of course, because of the multipath behavior of the channel, they, it, it will not be received as they were transmitted, but they will receive it as corrupted version. Corrupted because of the inter symbol interference. Okay, and now what happened at the receiver side? 
uh, we inject this known input and we compare them with the output of this filter and the difference between the output and the training sequence that we want is called error why error because i want the output to be exactly as the transmitted symbol or at least as close as possible to the transmitted symbol since they are not close like like, like uh, enough to the transmitted symbol then i will generate the error signal this error signal is uh, there is some algorithm here that we can adapt those adaptation for example if this is the weight let's say this is weight w0 w1 w2 w3 w4 so uh, i i am try i'm trying all the time to adapt those weights in order to minimize the error okay in order to minimize this error once the error is minimized what happened what that mean it means that this filter now reduce the impact of the channel okay once this training sequence completed for example 26 symbols then the actual data start to be transmitted and in that case we stop the training here so we don't have training anymore that the, 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 the this is the actual data coming and the actual data will go through this filter so it will be multiplied with the with the last weights that we have adapted and then we got the output but there's no training anymore then we get the output so the output will be clean version of the transmit uh, of the received one okay once uh, we got for example 100 symbol or 200 it depends of course on that on the coherence time of the channel after that what happened we start to send the training sequence again why because the channel is time varying the channel will change with time so in that case we will retransmit the training sequence again and the receiver it should also make this adaptation again uh, and uh, to to, uh, to readjust the weights and then start to receiving a new data and so on so this sequence or this uh, process will continue in this way so this is one famous type of equalizers we have different actually we have many kinds of equalizers like we have linear and nonlinear equalizers and we have equalizers under different concepts but most of them it can be described like in in this tabid delay line simple tabid delay line filter there's another way that we can mitigate the 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 the, the, the uh, multipath problem is by using CDMA. You remember that we mentioned in the um, I think it was in the previous part when we talk about CDMA or the multiple access. Actually, actually, it was in in part one when we talk about uh, some kind of uh, multiple access. How can we realize multiple access? And we uh, mentioned about the code division multiple access, and we said that code division multiple access can be realized by assigning. Uh, orthogonal or close to orthogonal code for each uh, user and at that case in the receiver we can separate between users the same concept here it can be used also to separate between different paths the idea is to use like special kind of codes uh, the, uh, in the way that if the code delayed by more than one chip then the resultant code will be like uncorrelated or, or at least will have very low correlation with the original uh, code so we have for example one code let's say this is one code okay one zero or one and minus one then the other code if it was delayed by one chip so for example uh, uh, the second one received it this way so it is exactly the same the first one but it was delayed you know was delayed like this so now that the, the delayed version will have very low correlation with the original one so what happened now because we the transmitted symbol it will be uh, like um, uh, multiplied with this code with this uh, like cdma code or spreading code and it will be transmitted in the receiver we will receive uh, the signal but it will be like delayed multipath but the delayed version they will also uh, they will have low autocorrelation or cross correlation between each other because every code delayed code will be seen as a different code and in that sense we can reduce the impact of the of the multi bath as as we can see here in the rec receiver so in the rec receiver we, we we receive the signal 
from multi paths and then we have correlated one correlated one it will be like uh, locked at delay tau one which is the first the first for example received uh, symbol and correlated two will be locked to the second uh, delayed uh, path and so on and in that case we we use like adaptive weights so for the signal which has the highest signal to noise ratio the highest quality we give it higher uh, weight because it will be considered as as the most important part other, uh, uh, however, we, we don't ignore the other paths. So we, we collect all paths together and we have the summation, then we have the correlator receiver. Actually, this rake receiver, it has two or actually three uh, benefits. First, it will handle or mitigate the problem of multi paths. So we don't have the ice eye problem or we, we reduce the ice eye problem. Second, it will introduce what is known as frequency diversity and also time diversity why it is a frequency diversity because we spread the signal over a very wide band and also it provides time diversity because of using this rake receiver um, when we talk later about diversity in, in in this part we will mention it once more so as a conclusion so about the ice eye problem, that ice eye, ice eye problem is a major limitation factor for achieving high data rate in wireless channels. However, that we have some techniques to handle this problem, like for example, using equalizers as we have seen, using CDMA with rake receiver, which will be also uh, more details given later, and also using OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, which will be described later. So we will see that we can handle this ISI by uh, uh, like increasing the time between symbols or reducing the data rate, but we don't actually reduce the data rate. We break down the, the, the fast rate into, into much lower rates, and we make them orthogonal to each other as we will see them uh, in, in, in of the M part. Okay, now this is what uh, we uh, see about ISI problem. Uh, however, we mentioned also that in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, multi path uh, or in uh, wireless channel in the multi path problem, we have the baseband and band pass impact. The baseband impact is the ISI. Now we saw how to handle them, but what is the problem in the band bus? In the band bus means that in the at the carrier frequency, if the signals are uh, like accumulated in phase, then we will have very high signal. They they will accumulate to each other, which is very good, and we this is what we like to have. But unfortunately, there is also a chance that we have out out of phase. Out of phase means that destructive fading, and the signal can disappear in certain places. However, because the 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 the, the channel is uh, um, okay. If the channel is static, so it is not time varying, then we can actually test where is the points that we have uh, destructive fading and where is the points that we have constructive fading. Okay, so we can put just the antenna in the place where we have constructive fading and that's it. And this the antenna will always receive very good signal quality. However, this, this will not happen because the channel is time varying. So the position or the locations where we, where we have like constructive or destructive fading are random and can change with time. Okay, so uh, when we have destructive fading, it means that the signal quality or the signal power, received signal power will be very, very low. And this can cause like packet loss or, 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 or very high like error rate. How to handle this problem? One method is using diversity. Diversity uh, uh, is a very simple and also very uh, efficient technique uh, that it can handle the problem of this uh, uh, this uh, multi path or this destructive fading and constructive fading. Okay. Um, so it is given here. So diversity is a powerful communication receiver technique that provides wireless link improvements at relatively a low cost. Okay, actually it can it can improve the quality up to 20 dB 100 times at very very low cost. Okay, what is the concept of, of diversity? The concept of diversity is that 
um, uh, assume assume for example that in the receiver side this is our receiver okay most of diversity techniques are done at the receiver but also we have the, the diversity that can be also done at the transmitter but let us talk about the receiver side so we have this receiver okay and now we have antenna here okay then we have the transmitter at certain area and it transmits the signal somewhere okay now we we might have a destructive fading at this point which means that the received signal will uh, uh, like the, the the information part of the received signal goes almost to zero and we have only noise which means that losses of packet okay but what if we bought another antenna okay another antenna in different location where we keep the distance between those two antennas to be more uh, greater than lambda uh, theoretically they say that greater than lambda over two but practically that it is better to be more than lambda like three lambda or four lambda in that case each antenna will see like uncorrelated channel so the the uh, so the channel seen here is not the same as the channel seen on the other antenna okay um, uh, to keep this like uh, more meaningful for you assume that we use a uh, frequency of 3 gigahertz okay 3 gigahertz and at 3 gigahertz frequency it means that lambda equal to the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power 8 divided by the frequency 3 times 10 to the power 9 so the lambda here equal to 10 centimeter okay then if you put those two antennas at a distance between them let's say 20 centimeters then you can see say that those two antennas are uh, seeing like almost uncorrelated channels okay what is the meaning of uncorrelated channel it means that if the probability of get one antenna let's say at 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 deep fading it is we call it deep fading when we have destructive fading assume that the probability of one antenna to be in, in deep fading be equal to 0.1 what, what what that mean it means that 10 percent of the time you will get lost packets because of the deep learning of the deep fading sorry okay now when we have two antennas if this one was in deep fading there's a chance that the other one is not at deep fading in that case, you can get always some signal. What is the probability that both antennas will, will see deep fading? So simply, if they are independent, so it will be 0.1 square, which means that 0.01. Okay, what, what that means? It means that only 1% of the time that you will lost your packet because of the deep fading. Okay, if you use one antenna, 10% of the time you will lost some some data because of the deep fading if you use two antennas then you improve the system 10 times so this probability will loss will drop up to only 0.01 that and by the way this you if you are using selective diversity selective diversity it means that you select this the antenna which doesn't have deep fading we have even better in uh, like performance if you if you use like maximum ratio combiner where you can use both antennas in the same time so it th th there is a chance that both antennas are in 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 in, in bad fading or in destructive fading but by adding both signals then you can get the uh, the, the data so even in this case the uh, the performance can can be uh, better than 99 percent here it is point it is only 90 uh, because the fading here is one percent which means that the performance is 99 percent okay what if you add third antenna then if all of them they are independent then the probability that all of them will be in deep fading it will be 0.1 of the power q because this must be in deep fading 0.1 and the second in deep fading times 0.1 and the third is in deep fading times 0.1 which means that one per thousand so you have also uh, greatly in, uh, improved your system so what is the cost the cost of just adding antennas and of course some some way how to select the signal here so the cost is very simple so it is it is not costly at all you add just some antennas at the receiver side but you increase and you improve the system a lot 
Of course, we have some limitations here as well. For example, if, if uh, as I said, if we use 3 gigahertz, and it means that uh, you need at least lambda to be at 10 centimeters to have multiple antennas, but if you have small, uh, like mobile phone, that you, um, you might not have that much uh, space that you can implement there. So what if you have 1 gigahertz? In this case, the uh, lambda will be about 30 centimeters. So which, which means that it is it, it, it is a little bit more complicated to implement multiple antennas in the uh, your receiver in your mobile phone because your mobile phone 30 centimeters is a lot. So uh, however, in that case of course we use also this some that uh, like transmit diversity that we can use to handle such such problem. But we can talk later about those. Now we are just talking about you know, about this diversity method. So this is this is called actually space diversity. This is called space diversity. We have we have at least six kinds of diversity: space diversity or spatial diversity. We have a frequency diversity. We have time diversity. We have polarization diversity. We have angle diversity. We have user diversity. We have the, the uh, and we might have even more because this spatial diversity can be done at the receiver or, or at the transmitter. Okay, so uh, now if we talk about the space diversity, we have actually three methods. Uh, to uh, to detect the signal or how to combine these multiple antennas in the receiver. We, we use some switching logic. This could be selection diversity or feedback diversity or maximum ratio combining. Okay, what is the selection diversity? Selection diversity is simply in, in space diversity that you select every time the antenna which has the highest uh, signal to noise ratio so you you just always you are watching all these antennas connected to your receiver and you have small switch where you can switch between the antennas to pick up the signal from the best antenna okay however that uh, you, you need always like fast switching to 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 switch between the antennas so this could be reduced by using feedback diversity so feedback diversity you will be always connected to one antenna as far as this antenna gives you a reasonable signal to noise ratio so you don't need to switch even there is another antenna gives better signal to noise ratio i don't have to switch as far as i get satisfied signal to noise ratio from one antenna if the signal to noise ratio dropped because of the of deep fading then of course i start to to search fast for the for the other antenna that to, to switch to it so this is the way it is called feedback diversity selection with feedback diversity so uh, i reduce the number of switching between antennas the best performance one is what is known as maximum ratio combining so you can see that we have multiple antennas but for each antenna that i use adaptive uh, adaptive phase in order to have in phase reception and also for all of them I make in-phase reception for all of them and also I check the signal quality or the signal to noise ratio for each antenna the antenna which has the best signal to noise ratio I get it I give it the highest gain and the, 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 the smallest signal to noise ratio I give it the smallest gain but anyway I don't drop any signal so I try to combine all these signals together to get this maximum ratio combiner this is the maximum ratio combiner like diversity which which usually gives the best performance okay and uh, okay now let us go back to the kinds of diversity so we said this is the spatial diversity or space diversity we have also the frequency diversity frequency diversity simply simply that your transmitter will send your data over different frequencies in the same time so they send it for example at at the frequency f1 and the frequency f2 what is the condition here you should sep separate between those frequencies to be large enough to be more than the coherence frequency of the channel so you you guarantee that each frequency will see like in independent channel so, so that if one frequency was in deep fading or, uh, or or in destructive fading, the other frequency might not be in that in that in that situation. So in that case, you increase your diversity. You can receive the signal. Of course, we have different kinds of frequency diversity, like. Uh, um, like in off dm we might send the same information if we have very critical information very important information especially for the control plan in in network for example to control signals we can send them over different like sub bands 
uh, but we keep the distance, the frequency distance between, uh, or the frequency separation between those subbands to guarantee that they will see different channel or independent channel. Also in the Bluetooth, they use what is known as a frequency hopping, and also in JSM, actually in some other systems, they use the, that they ch they can switch the carry frequency from frequency to frequency with different times uh, in order to guarantee that we have some like fair distribution of the frequencies plan so that we 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 uh, if there's certain frequency in certain area uh, which uh, like experience a lot of uh, uh, uh constructive destructive fading then uh, or deep fading then we can get out by using this frequency diversity Time diversity is also the same concept like frequency, but now in time. So you can send the same signal, but or the same information in different times. So you send, for, exa for example, symbol one, and after some time you resend symbol one again. Okay. So if the receiver lo lost uh, the reception of the first symbol, they have because of destructive fading, then they have the chance to receive it in the second time. Okay, so this time diversity actually it 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 provides very very important feature for those systems which is not possible to have feedback channel from the transmitter from the receiver to the transmitter that they didn't receive the signal. So and and this message is very important. So simply you you, you transmit it over different times the same message. But you keep the time between each symbol and the other symbol to be more than the coherence time of the channel in order that they to see like like uh, independent or orthogonal uh, channels. So in that case, the pro if the probability of, of being in destructive fading or in deep fading like B, then the probability to be both of the transmission in the same destructive fading will be B squared in that case, which can be much smaller. Then we have polarization diversity. Polarization diversity also is is uh, uh, very important. By the way, be before I continue with the polarization diversity, come back to this time diversity. We have, as we seen before, the CDMA with the RIC receiver. They use some kind of time diversity because why? Because you use you receive the multipath of the signal. So actually, multipath is of the signal even. Many people, or actually, uh, we see as multipath as a problem, but also it can benefit. It can be a benefit because now we have multipath. So if one path was not received because of destructive fading, then the second path, actually, or the third path, it can be like like a, a spare or like standby or something like that. That even if we lost the symbol from one path, we can receive the symbol from other delayed path, and this could be like like like. Um, um, maximally uh, combining with using RIC receiver in CDMA and also in other systems. So many systems, they use this multipath as time diversity. So they provide some kind of time diversity of the system. And uh, polarization diversity, uh, uh, actually, uh, when we transmit electromagnetic wave over antennas, for example, over linear antenna, we might have vertical polarization and horizontal polarization. And those two polarizations are orthogonal. So actually, unfortunately, we have only two polarizations, uh, but still they can be used as diversity. So we can send uh, signal as uh, over vertical and the same signal over horizontal. So in that case, if one of the signals were not like received due to deep fading, then we have the chance to receive the signal from the other polarization by using only two antennas at the receiver, but one is vertically uh, oriented and the other one is horizontally oriented. Then we have the angle uh, diversity. For the angle diversity, that that uh, sorry, that the signal uh, using uh, multiple antennas with with um, complex weights, we can control actually the, the radiation pattern. Uh, 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 or the reception uh, pattern of the antenna. So uh, when we have signals com coming from different angles, then we can adjust our antenna. It is called beamforming. We will talk about beamforming in different uh, place in the coming parts. So in this beamforming, we can uh, exploit uh, the fact that the signals from different places of or from different uh, paths they came from with different angles so we can combine them so we got time diversity and and using this angle diversity however many like references they use this beamforming antennas uh, as uh, like uh, part of spatial diversity as well finally here we have user diversity 
user diversity actually it is not diversity in the general sense however that in the in the in the downlink from the system to the users or from the base station to the users since all users they are uh, like spatially distributed they are not of course located in one point so, so they are distributed and since uh, because of that every user might see like different channel behavior and because of that if one user like like uh, experience a deep fading then there is a chance that and there is another user that his channel is destructive uh, or constructive fading so if one, some users are in 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 uh, destructive fading there's a, 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 like a chance that other users will be in constructive fading so actually the network might get benefit of that because in that case i uh, the, the network will select the users which have very good quality channel quality high channel quality to provide them with the best like signal to noise ratio or, or provide them with the highest spectrum efficiency bits for example they use with them uh, let's say uh, 64 quam or 128 quam which means that they can send very high data rate for those users then you might ask but this is not fair actually it is fair from other side uh, from other angle because uh, uh, this uh, uh, like uh, uh, changes in the channel is not always the same so if some users they, they experience a, a destructive fading and others are constructive fading this situation might change in next time so next time that uh, uh, the, the those uh, who uh, had been in in destructive fading maybe they have also now constructive fading so they will be served with very high data rate as well so this is called time scheduling between users and this is called user diversity so this user diversity can be used by the transmitter or by the network in order to improve the total performance of of the system you can see here in the slides that uh, more explanations about those diverse diversity techniques okay uh, now we come to the to another topic of interleaving but I can see that the time is already much more than half an hour uh, I was trying to keep the those clips within half an hour but sometimes I uh, I lost control so thank you very much and see you in the next clip thanks a lot